right, all right. This is Brian J signing on to talk about the Mackenzie Dern versus Ashley Yoder fight. And I have to say, her UFC debut was a little disappointing, at least uh, for for Mackenzie Dern. Um, her striking and her stand-up was terrible. Um, and she, even though she has great jiu-jitsu, I feel like her jiu-jitsu and MMA is just not really... I don't know. It's just not really translating well. well she wasn't pulling guard. She wasn't, you know, like trying to trying to pull guard on her back or trying to get really actually her her wrestling and her takedown offense just wasn't really that great and it's not always that great for jiu-jitsu fighters but for hers it was just really terrible at times and Ashley Yoder was out striking her and landing the more accurate strikes um but she wasn't landing more significant strikes I felt that I felt that Mackenzie Dern landed more significant strikes in the first round probably stole it I thought she won um, most of the round in the first round, and I gave Dern the third round, but you could easily give Ashley Yoder the first two rounds. I gave Yoder the second round. She clearly won the second round, and you could probably give her the first round, but yeah, Mackenzie just did not look that good, uh, and Ashley didn't look that good. I didn't feel either fighter really clearly won the fight, but Mackenzie probably wanted it more because she went for the takedown, um, really a desperation takedown in the third round, and she took Ashley to the ground, and she went for a submission attempt, tried to get for the choke. And try to get her in the choke, and she she got close, but she just wasn't. I, I guess she she was a little bit too t- too tired to really sink it in and to really squeeze tight enough to to get Ashley to go to sleep or to get her to tap out. But yeah, I was just really disappointed in Mackenzie's performance. I mean, you know, the UFC is a different level, and I think if Mackenzie tries to climb up the ranks, she's still going to struggle. She might struggle even against um, Angela Hill and Randa Marcos. I think even Randa Marcos could beat Mackenzie on the ground, maybe, and certainly could beat her standing up. I mean, I think Alexa Grosso could probably give McKenzie a really tough fight. But, you know, if they put McKenzie against anybody in the top 10, like the bottom five or the top five, I mean, against somebody like Tisha Torres or uh, Jessica Andrade, Rose Namajunas or Yolanda Najacek, I mean, she's just not, she's just not going to last. And McKenzie's definitely not going to last at 125. I mean, Valentina would destroy her. Uh, Sabina Mazza would destroy her if she ever comes to the UFC. Andrea Lee, Jennifer Maya. I mean, yeah, I mean, Mackenzie has her work cut out for her. I don't think Mackenzie Dern is good enough to ever become a world champion. And I think when Mackenzie really gets her ass kicked and really takes a lot of punishment, gets put to sleep, she might be finished, man. She might just leave MMA, the UFC, and just stick to modeling and taking pictures. And, you know, she doesn't really care about fighting. She doesn't really like this stuff. You know, I get the feeling, seeing seeing her interviews and talking about MMA and getting punched in the face and training – I just get the feeling that she doesn't really like this and that she's not really passionate about it. Like, she doesn't live fighting. She doesn't live and breathe fighting. You know, it's just not her passion. She's more into photo shoots and modeling and doing interviews and getting sponsorship money and just being famous. She loves the fame and the fortune. So, I just don't see her staying in the sport for long. She even says she's only going to be in the sport for, like, another three or four years and then she's out. So, she might be out early than that if she really gets destroyed in a fight. So, yeah, I don't think Mackenzie Dern is... She's okay. I mean, she has a lot to work on, but I don't think she's really ready to become a world champion. Um, so I was disappointed in her performance, and I hope she doesn't get badly hurt. But, you know, considering that her striking, her striking was, and her stand-up was almost as bad as Ronda's stand-up. Like, it just wasn't there. I mean, Mackenzie was fighting with her hands down, her chin in, her chin really high, her head in one spot. Like, it was just terrible striking and stand-up. Like, it was just, it was really bad. And I just, I'm very worried about her. I hope she doesn't you know, get really badly hurt, but that might actually happen. And if Mackenzie gets really hurt, she might be finished. I mean, I, I really don't expect her to even fight for another three or four years if that's the case, because the UFC will have no choice but to put Mackenzie in there with killers eventually at 115 or 125. And I think the top 10 at 115 to 125 could beat her, you know, except for Paige Van Zandt. I think only Mackenzie Dern could, I think that would be her best opponent, really. That would be her easiest opponent on the roster would be Paige Van Zandt. You know, maybe, um, um, uh, uh, I don't even think she could beat Rachel Osovich, but she'll do better against Rachel than against anybody else in the top 10 and at 125. Rachel's not even in the top 10, but how could Mackenzie Dern beat Shanna, Shanna Dobson? No, I don't think so. I don't think she's going to beat Shanna Dobson. She can't beat Nico Montano. You know, she can't beat Roxanne Modafferi. She can't beat Barb Honchak, not Lauren Murphy, uh, or Sajara Eubanks. But, you know, Mackenzie's just in here for a short period of time, and she's going to retire, and she's going to be making millions. So, good for her. But, you know, good luck to her, and I hope she doesn't get hurt really badly. And I'm done. This is Brian J. signing off for now.